Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a locus problem with complex numbers. What is that supposed to mean? Well, we're going to try to find the solution set, the set of Z's, set of complex numbers that satisfy this equation, but why is it a locus problem? Because we're probably going to get infinitely many solutions. At least that's what I expect to get. You might end up with a single solution, which can also be a locus. The locus can be a point, right? Great, so we have an interesting scenario here. The real part of a complex number is equal to one half. So what is so special about it, right? It kind of reminds me uh, Riemann's uh, conjecture about the real part being something like, I don't know, was it negative one half or one? Anyways, I couldn't remember, but that kind of reminded uh, me that. So to solve these kinds of problems, and in general, this applies to pretty much any type of equation you may get, we can replace z with a plus bi. And what is so significant about a plus bi is that a plus bi is the name of this channel, which kind of makes sense, right? That's how we can write a complex number in general form. Uh, of course, one thing to pay attention to, a and b have to be real numbers, right? Now, how does this help? We can go ahead and plug it in and then just use the definition of real part. What is the real part of a complex number eh? anyways, right? The real part is A, so the real part of Z would be A, and the imaginary part of Z, which we don't need for this problem, would be B. But wait a minute, this is not Z. Exactly, so whatever that number comes out to be, we're gonna be looking at its real part, okay? So let's go ahead and plug it in. But since I suspect this could be a locus problem, in other words, we may get infinitely many solutions, which could be expressed uh, with an equation like x squared plus y squared equals four, which happens to be a circle, right? And if you remember, one of the recent problems that we did, I think it was on Tuesday, right? Uh, I mean yesterday, was it Tuesday? Okay, something like that uh, was a locus problem too, right? But anyways, today is Saturday, I guess, right? Or when I recorded, it wasn't Saturday, but when I published, this should be Saturday. Anyways, let's go ahead and see what happens. But since I think this is a locus problem, I'm going to go ahead and use x plus yi uh, for substitution. So no offense, a plus bi. Don't take it personally. We're just going to use x plus yi this time. Now, if you go ahead and plug it in, we are looking at the real part of 1 over 1 minus z, right? 1 minus, and you have to put that thing in parentheses. Be careful with that. And we want this to be one half. This is all given, right? Now we're going to go ahead and simplify this as much as possible. Because do you know the real part of this in terms of x and y? You probably don't, right? Because it needs to be simplified. And whenever you have a complex number in the denominator, a non-real complex number like this or a plus bi, then you want to get rid of that. Kind of like similar to rationalizing denominators, like when you have 1 over root 2, you don't want to keep it that way and multiply by root 2. You multiply by, by the radical, radical, <laughs> radical, radical conjugate, right? So you do the same thing here. Well, something similar, which is the complex conjugate. But let's simplify this first. So I have the real part of this, which is 1 minus x minus yi. Now, how do you find the complex conjugate of a complex number. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I go over the basics of complex numbers. And you know what the best way to learn about any subject in math? Ask questions. That's the best way to learn. And always, always ask questions. And if you like number theory, algebra, and trigonometry problems, I have another channel. That's actually my very first channel, cyber math, but it is cyber with an S. Okay, pay attention to that. Great, so let me know what you think and let's go ahead and go back to this problem. So now, the complex conjugate of A plus BI is A minus BI. So you basically negate the imaginary part. And why is this important and why is it called a complex conjugate? Because these two numbers make a nice pair. And the reason being is if you call this, I'm not gonna call it, well, maybe W and W bar, when you add W and W bar, you get 2A, which is real, okay? And when you multiply these things from difference of two squares, which turns into sum of two squares, you get a squared plus b squared, which is real again. So the only pair that satisfies this, they're gonna be conjugates, make sense? So what is the conjugate of this number? You have to change the imaginary part only. But wait a minute, this is not written in a plus bi form, right? Exactly. So we kind of have to 
make the denominator real. So let's start with this. And then let's go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by 1 minus x. Notice that the real part is unchanged. And you negate the imaginary part. And of course, the numerator must also be the same. So you're essentially multiplying by 1. Make sense? So now the numerator becomes this. And the denominator from sum of two squares, because remember, i squared is negative 1. Oops, I forgot to say that. My apologies. i squared is always negative 1. And then from here, you get 1 minus x quantity squared plus y squared. Now, this is my complex number, but it needs a little bit more simplifying, okay? So let's go ahead and separate the real part and the imaginary part like this, yeah? So we're going to go ahead, and you can write the i first if you want. Sometimes people are going to write a plus b i as a plus i b. That's okay. Uh, I sometimes do that too, but I don't really like it. Anyways, whatever. So this is your number, and guess what? This is the real part of your number. If you call this w, that's the real part of w. And this is the imaginary part of w. And notice that the imaginary part does not contain i because it needs to be real. Even though it's called the imaginary part, it's still real. Okay? Can you believe that? Now, remember the initial question, the initial problem. The real part of this number is supposed to be one half. So I'm going to set the real part equal to one half because we already know the real part, right? That's why we did this whole operation thing, multiply by the conjugate, simplify, so on and so forth. Now, you're basically in the real world, sort of, and what you're going to do is you're going to simplify this. And I, I think we're going to have infinite many solutions. What do you think at this point, right? Make a guess. So let's go ahead and cross multiply this first. We're going to get 2 minus 2x, and we can go ahead and expand it, right? This is going to be 1 minus 2x plus x squared plus y squared equals 2 minus 2x. And 2x is just going to cancel out, right? And then we're going to go ahead and put this together, x squared plus y squared. And then we're going to subtract 1 equals 1. Uh-oh, what did this turn into? This turned into a circle, because from the, from the Pythagorean theorem, if you think about all points like x comma y, uh, x squared plus y squared represents the distance from 0 squared. Or uh, if you think about it geometrically, by the Pythagorean theorem, uh, this is going to be the hypotenuse. And you want the hypotenuse to be 1. Uh, of course, that's going to be the radius, because the radius is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. So when you rotate it, you're going to get a circle, which is basically... Uh, the unit circle. So the answer is the unit circle. And guess how many solutions are there? There are infinitely many solutions to this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.